I went to the bins on Friday with some friends who had never been and it's funny because I had two friends ask me, hey, will you take me to the bins for the first time? And so I said, sure. And they both asked me in the same week. And so I was able to take three people to the bins for the first time on Friday. And it was really fun for me just seeing them, checking it out for the first time. They're not resellers and to just sort of see the experience through them. But I wanted to quickly share what I picked up at the bins. I spent $40. I got 16 pounds of hard goods and clothing. I also got one book and I got $1.57 in linens, which is one of the most exciting things I'm going to share today. And linens they charge 49 cents a pound for, so slam dunk there. And the next thing I got was for $8. Okay, so I'm gonna hold off on those big items for last because they're random and I'm not reselling them, but I couldn't pass on them because it was the bins. I will say I am wearing this beautiful Athleta cashmere sweater that I just sourced yesterday and I tried it on like, oh, this will be cute. I'll wear something that I sourced in my video. And now I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep that. So I think I'm keeping this Athleta cashmere sweater. I feel like it's a good choice. It's a really good fit. And of course it's super soft. Let's get started with what I found at the bins for 40 bucks and what I think I'm gonna make off of these items. Give it a try. The first item that I picked up, let's see, the brand is Amy Kestenberg. Not familiar with this, but I will always pick up these leather goods that are just like little card holders. I recently sold a scotch and soda one for 20 some dollars. I think it's a smart move and good investment. That kind of looks dirty, but it's actually the aesthetic of the item and that's how it came, distressed looking like that. I found this Carhartt hat and it's hard to see, but this is actually a reflective label. This is called the WIP line and I don't know what that stands for, but it's WIP. So Carhartt made a little bit more of an urban line. And so I have this for sale right now. It's a flex fit for $99 in my closet. I'm not sure what I'm gonna get for it, but I'm hoping 75. You can't buy it anymore. And this line seems to have a really great price point. Another random pickup, couldn't pass it up. This is an Ergo Baby all weather cover. So if you're carrying your baby in a carrier on the front of you, AKA an Ergo Baby Carrier. This has all sorts of snaps and attachments and fleece on the inside and has a water resistant liner to cover your baby up and keep it warm if you get stuck out in weather that you don't anticipate or if you're adventurous enough and need to get out of the house every day and it's freezing cold like it is here in Colorado, you put that on your baby and head out anyway. The next item I picked up is just this Mark by Mark Jacobs Standard Supply Quilted Tote. It has fun print on the inside. It needed a soak and deep wash, but it came out so nice. One of the straps on this bag has the seams um, came undone, but the edging is still there, like the hemline is still there. So I priced these a little bit closer to $55 instead of 85 or something that it's more going for. I always adjust to condition. So keep that in mind. You may see comps for that bag for $100, $100, $100, but if it's not in $100, almost new with tag quality, 
adjust. This I actually picked up for myself. This was also a mess. This is a really heavy duty canvas pouch. When I did my research, I actually discovered, you know, there's a tag down here on the inside, that this was made well, and this was one of their carry all, carry all totes with a leather handle, and it was a clear exterior bag, and then this was the insert in the clear bag. It's super cool. I could tell just by the feeling of it. I had no idea I wanted it for myself because I can use this in my bags that, um, you know, that was good quality. Turns out to be made well. I don't have the other piece of it. I'm not selling it anyway. The next item I picked up was just a J. Crew blouse. Now, if you look right here, you can see there are two little diamonds below the word J. Crew. That means it's actually from the factory store. It's just a very fun spring embroidered sleeveless top. A friend of mine passed this along to me and you are not going to be able to see the label, but it is Garnet Hill. It's just printed right there. It reminds me of a Bowdoin or Patagonia style travel dress. It has really nice lines, wrinkle free. This item is a Neiman Marcus collection. It's kind of a capey shawl style sweater. I did pick this up mainly due to the print. And then when I saw that it was Neiman Marcus, I definitely... Next up is a Saturday Sunday, which is just an anthro label. It's a really soft gray sweater that has sort of a floral yoking to it. I will list this for $32, but anticipate taking an offer or sending an offer for around $25. I had a friend who was there picking up t-shirts. She uses them for crafting projects, and I grabbed this for her, but then I actually realized it was new with tags, and I was like, hey, I'm going to keep this t-shirt. This is just a long sleeve. It was new with tags, and anything like that that's new with tags that you find at the bins, I am. Therefore, I'm going to show you a stack of three pairs of Levi's that very oddly enough, an employee came out and just dumped a bunch of stuff on an end cap out of a trash bag. And these were in that pile. Three pairs of Levi's. I'm going to show you they are either wedgie or wedgie straights. And I picked up a pair in a size 24 a pair of size 25, and a pair of size 26. Confession, I don't do great with wedgies or those Levi's. I mean, they don't sell quickly for me, but at the bins, I am absolutely gonna pick up with um, Levi's jeans. Here is, I just had this in my video of what shipped and sold. This is just a pair of men's Bonobos khaki pants. This was a bad purchase, <laughs> uh, Denise. I, you know, got caught up in the Nordstrom collection. I was like, oh, that's cute, I'll buy that. And I don't know anyone who looks at all we'll see oh wow huge hole in the front of it bad choice denise minnetonka just fringy black boots zip in the back i picked these up basically due to condition this is a funny pickup a pair of suspenders why did you pick up a pair of suspenders i will show you why <laughs> They're not easy to find and they fetch a pretty decent price because they are Patagonia. I picked up these Bruno Magli made in Italy peep toe shoes in sack roots bag. So sack is a pretty popular purse maker and sack roots i don't know it looks like it's a little bit safari feeling a little bit fun i always go with what's the condition on the inside to help me determine if i'm gonna buy it or not i have another item i need to go another 
three items I need to go grab and that's all I got. My favorite reselling find of the day were these teaks, ballet flats. The, if you follow me on social media, the story goes, I was talking to my friends. I took a look over and I saw turquoise hanging out. I know for a fact I have already looked through that bin, so someone must have put these back. A lot of people just grab, grab, grab shoes and then they sort through them. So they, these must have been an item that someone decided they didn't want. What a bins find. And they're in really good condition. You know, black is just kind of average. They're not going to be at the high price point of what you can get for teaks, but I am not gonna pass up a $100 pair of shoes. I picked up this book called A Gift from the Sea, which is a lovely book that was given to me a number of years ago from someone special. And so I hopefully am gonna give this to someone special as well. 69 cents for books. Now, the next item I would say is one of my greatest home good finds at the bins. I'm always looking for home goods at the bins. I do resell hard goods and home goods. And um, let this just do the talking. This is a two and a half foot by 10 foot. I'm going to try to show what it looks like runner and it has this gorgeous butterfly print to it. It just keeps going and going and going. Turns out I actually have an extra runner pad because these aren't just the rug itself. They have a special pad that goes with them because it is a, a brand you should be familiar with. It's a ruggable. So wow, total score. This is like maybe a $300 rug really great condition. I can throw it in the washing machine and I already have an extra pad. Yay. I am using it in front of my slider for where Louie comes in and if he has muddy paws, wet paws, he's got about 10 feet to catch all of that stuff before he hits the hardwood floors. So I am loving it. And last but not least, this is in its original box. And I never thought I would own one of these, but when you get the opportunity at the bins, if an item is over five pounds, they have flat rates of what they charge. This was $8 because it wasn't 10 pounds, but at 10 pounds and over, it goes up to $12. I bought, I don't know if you can recognize and see what this is, but I found a Cricut and it has its original box and all of the stuff in it. And I have to admit, I think there's, ooh. I'm notorious for knocking over the camera. I have to admit, I think crickets are super cool. And so I was very excited to find this. And that was my $40 trip to the bins. I know for a fact the teaks will pay for my entire trip and everything else will be bonus. I do find it interesting to sort of reflect upon what I pick up and how discerning I am now at the bins. I used to go to the bins and just go, go wild. Like I would just voraciously consume and buy things, but I don't do that anymore. So Louis is right off of camera, I'll grab him. And so it is nice to see that a person can evolve at the bins and does you don't have to buy it. Come here, come say hi. Come on, here he comes. Hi, honey. Oh, he wants to actually sit right on my lap. And that's all I have for my bins trip. I'm gonna. Hi, friends. Denise here for part two of this video. I did that haul on what I sourced at the bins, and I decided it really wasn't very substantial. I am maybe being too selective these days at the bins. So I thought I'd share what I've picked up this week thrifting and what I just posted this weekend, which is the first weekend of March. And let's see how things sell. Let's. I'm going to start with shoes because I had a really good run on shoes and I needed to. These are a little bit random. They are split 
toe, either sneakers or booties. The brand on these is, I believe, to be I Love You So Much, I-L-S, I-L-Y-S-M. And this company is no longer in business. I found these really great army green dance goes in lovely condition. They are small, a size 37. These are a pair of Clark's Originals. Let's see if I can get that in there. These are called Wallabies. These are the boot style. They do make a shoe style. They have a gum sole, which is close to near impossible to clean, but the suede itself is in really great shape. I found a lovely pair of current Birkenstocks. These are the Arizonas, but they're called the Big Buckle because they have, believe it or not, big buckles. What's cool about these, they sell these at Anthro and in the Sundance catalog. They have the black footbed instead of the brown, so it makes them kind of monochromatic looking. They are definitely a style that is still current and sells for $160. The next pair of shoes I picked up was a pair of APLs. <laughs> Athletic Propulsion Labs is what they're called. Let's see if I can get this to appear. So that's what it looks like here. And then the tag itself is right there. I just picked these up last night and really not in my wheelhouse of what I normally pick up. The brand is Echo. These have never been worn and they're still being sold. They're a size 10. They retail for 160, I think. And so this was purely a condition purchase. I would not pick up Echo, and I know a lot of people do, but it's just not a brand that I lean towards. But because these are in such amazing shape and they look like they have never been worn, I pick them up. Next, I have a little run on one of my favorite brands to find. These are called Little Cats. These are just the Rothy, the flat, they call them. Those are a size nine. These are called Bottle Blue. These are Rothy, the loafer. So if you look here, they're a little bit of a different style. I also would like to point out for those of you who maybe don't have sourced Rothy's before, you're always going to want to take out the inner sole and then you're going to want to check on here that it says made in China, which these do say made in China. They usually have this little tag here as well. It's funny, I sourced four pairs last night on a Saturday night and they're all size seven. Someone must have given up their collection and what's interesting to me is that none of them had that little tag on the inner sole, but um, they all have the made in China. So these are just black classics. And these are called the point and we're basically covering all the bases of the types of Rothy's that you can source. When it's white up here instead of blue, See how this is blue? That's kind of Rothy signature blue there. When it's white up here, which these are, that's called the halo of the shoe. So these have white halos and this is called dark camo. Now Rothy's retires their colors or produces just limited runs of them. And so the bottle blue and the dark camel were, and the little cat are all officially retired in those styles. And the last pair are a pair of purple loafers. They're pretty basic, very exciting. A couple of accessories. This is a hand knit by a women's cooperative. It's called Blah Blah. This was a company that came onto the scene when my daughters were very little and now they're in college. So this company's been around for 20 years or so. This is just a backpack. It has a little zipper pouch. And the last item I found 
is a Lily Pulitzer backpack. Uh, I forget the name of the style, but I'll put it on the screen. I've posted this already for $60, and it has gotten plenty of likes already, which I am pleased with. Okay, switching gears to the clothing finds, and I'm kind of laughing about this pile because I make short videos on Instagram about items that I had just picked up. And so I'm like, have I posted about this or not posted about this? But I have definitely not made a video for YouTube about these items. This week I was able to find this lovely cashmere athleta sweater and I was wearing it at the beginning of this video. I will be keeping this sweater because, well, I love cashmere and if I can pick it up at the thrift store for $8.99, I'm going to keep it. If I decide I'm not going to wear it, I sell it. So I have photographed this item. I have found stocked photos for this item. This is an Outdoor Voices, which, you know, leggings can be a little hard to sell. I have an easier time with their bras. It's an outdoor brand company, yoga clothing company. And this is actually a beautiful pullover and it's a wool blend. So wool, cashmere. Yeah, I'm keeping it. So I have this. Basically what I do is when I source items that I decide if I'm going to keep for a little bit or not, I tend to take photos of them. I put them in my drafts. I get them ready to go. And if it comes to the point of where I decide I'm not wearing it and I want to sell it, it's already loaded and ready to go in my drafts. So that's a little tip of what I do. I don't know if you ever get on the fence about letting something go or not. I like to give it a few weeks. If I decide that I'm not wearing it, then... I just post it. The next item I picked up was just this anthro cable knit. It's kind of a poncho style sweater. It's pretty lightweight. It's super cute. It's got a unique sleeve to it. These are just a pair of Nike. These are called the Tempo running shorts. They are dry fit. I picked them up because of the prints and because they were an extra large. Now this item I sourced and I was excited about. It's just a rust color Patagonia pullover. It has the small embroidery right here on the chest and it also, there's the tag, so an interesting thing about this zip up fleece is that when I was going to photograph it, I thought, oh wow, that looks kind of weird, like around the mock neck. Well, I determined that someone must have cut the hood off of it and kind of hemmed it. They did a good job, but this is now a mock neck and it used to be a hooded fleece. Not really that great, but I actually only got that for $3.99, so I'm just gonna let it go. I posted it as, you know, Patagonia fleece zip up jacket, and I also called it altered in the title. I picked up a pretty basic, just a button down. I like to show when I post one sleeve cuffed. This is a button cuff sleeve and one sleeve long. It's Patagonia. It doesn't have any branding on the outside, which I don't know if, I kind of feel like people who wear Patagonia wanna show off that they're wearing Patagonia. So I'm a little bit on the fence about picking up Patagonia that doesn't have external branding to it. Next up is just a Fair Isle inspired Nordic-y Sundance Merino wool long line cardigan, sweater jacket, whatever you want to call it. Here's a boho floral. The brand on this is Vinit Ball. She, I do have found this brand associated with anthropology. I'm not sure if all of her stuff is, but I thought this was cute. It was half price. I also picked up these driftwood jeans. I love picking up driftwood. They These are called the Farah. They typically have 
floral embroidery and I pick them up even when they're not embroidered. These do have a raw hem on the bottom and they're more like capri length than inseam on these is like a 24. Next up is this, it's kind of a rusty orange <laughs> day. Next up is this Eileen Fisher. It's another long line wool item. I obviously love sourcing wool. Eileen Fisher is, an, is a brand that I pick up. I'm not sure if Eileen Fisher is a hot seller for me, but I pick it up anyway. This brand I used to source and then I pretty much stopped sourcing, but this was a style-based pickup. This is a size 2X. The brand on this is Soft Surroundings. It's like a sweatshirt, long line cardigan, and it just has really lovely details to it. This double lace and the buttons. So that's what helped me decide if I wanted to pick this up or not. I picked up a men's, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna call it a shacket because it does have pockets. It's a flannel from L.L. Bean. It's just the regular fit, but if you look closely, it is actually fleece lined, so it's more heavyweight. This is black watch plaid and really one of my favorite plaids. I have a couple of Pendleton pieces in this plaid. This next item is really exciting. I found this last night and I almost passed on it because I know the designer Chloe, but I didn't realize she had a diffu diffusion line called C by Chloe. So this is Chloe's diffusion line, which means, you know, it's not as high end. Let's say her purses sell for 750 to $5,000. C by Chloe is going to sell more like 250 to $1,000. So it's really, when I say diffusion, it is. This is actually a silk dress. It has sequin sleeves and a zip up the back. What's cool about this is that um, Cameron Diaz is in a lot of photos wearing this dress. So that's the photo I am using for the posting. Now, this is just a Knox Rose pickup. To be honest, I don't leave any gauze dresses behind. I love this fabric for myself. And so I source it, even though this is a Target brand. This is a unique item I picked up. I live in an area where cycling is huge. This kind of looks like a mechanic coverall. What's interesting about this is that the brand on it is Pearl Azumi. Now Pearl Azumi is a pretty well-known cycling company. They make cycling shoes and spandex shorts jerseys the whole nine and i thought this was really neat because it was new with tags it retails for 250 dollars, and so i posted it for around 150 maybe 125 this is called the sunday shirt or the sunday flannel it's just made well it is actually a little bit old but i love that it had the pockets I loved the color of it and the styling of it. I left a lot of things, a lot of Madewell things behind at the thrift store last night, but this I had to take with me. Next up is a pair of American Giant. These are Ponty Knit Flare Leg Pants. These are super cool. I tried them on. I am five foot 11. So unfortunately, they're just a little bit too short for me. They are supposed to be a cropped styling, but on me, they just look awkward. So I'm selling them. Next up is a Pure Jill linen shirt. Really cute, boxy fit. I actually had this on earlier, confession, confession. It looks super cute on. This is gonna be hard to get into the shot, but it's just an H&M chiffon floral maxi dress. 
And last but not least is this really beautiful Trina Turk 100% silk maxi dress. Here's the label on that. This is pretty current and it's still available on the Trina Turk website in different sizes, not in a size small. It retails for about $450. And I'm, I'm not going to say it's new with tags, but what's interesting is that it still has this hanging on it. So I'm not sure if it was worn or not. I don't see any signs of wear. So that's all I have for what I have sourced this week and have currently posted in my closet. What's funny is that I popped into the thrift store last night about 40 five minutes before closing on a Saturday night and I honestly just expected it to be totally picked over because you know people come from all over the Denver Boulder area to thrift in different locations on the weekend just like I do I'll go to neighboring towns to go thrifting where I normally don't hit during the week so I feel like my closest thrift store would be really picked over and it turns out there were so many racks that they were about to still put out and shoes had just freshly been put out and that's how I scored four of those pairs of Rothy's and so I kind of take back all these things that I feel of like it's not a good idea to go thrifting on a Saturday night. Mm, yeah, it is a good idea to go thrifting on a Saturday night. They are still accepting donations until 9 p.m. every night. They are processing the items. They're getting them out on the floor. So, I mean, I'm finding Trina Turk. I am finding Chloe and Rothy's. Um, count me in. Also, I found this last night and it turns out I think this is going to be quite popular. It already has gotten a lot of traction in my closet and I just posted it this morning. So that's what I'm listing and I'm curious to see how some of these items do. As always with my ship with me videos, I'll keep everyone posted on what sold. Take care.